What's happening, people? My name's Dozy. His name's... My name's Dozy. And we are bringing you another show, which is called The Real Wrestling Show... Dash Blog. We are wrestling fans doing this show for real wrestling fans, which we believe is the best wrestling product out there today, which is... A E W. Booyah! Um, this week is this week is a pay per view special. Uh, it's actually uh, the second episode this week because of the pay per view. Episode sixty seven of the blog. And we also are going to be doing at the Friday Night Dark, which crapped up on us, which AEW didn't actually advertise very well, but it was only fifty five minutes long, but still worth taking a look at. We should have known. We should, have known. we should have known better than to not watch Dark <laughs> until after the pay-per-view. I watched it first, though. I got up early this morning and watched it. Uh, mate, I didn't know until last night when I texted you saying, oh, are you watching the buy-in and that? You were like, oh, no, but there's another Dark. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, like I said, mate, got to the Mox, got to the Mox, Mox match, and then I was like, oh, I've had enough. This, the Mox match should be a good display yeah like i thought it would be being a little bit longer yeah you know, it was a good match don't get me wrong but uh, you know i was antici- anticipating it being a little bit a little bit longer if i had known that it was only going to be that yeah i would have just been like oh, i'll hop off to bed like to me you know after that but but yeah very good showing man mm-hmm. we're gonna run through dark first then yeah yeah man i reckon so so dark. um we had ding, 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 ding. Anthony and Gogo on commentary for this one. A Gogo. A Gogo with um, Taz and Excalibur. And um, we had a debut match for Tasha Price versus Big Swole. Nice look to Tasha Price. Yep, not 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 a very long match at all. Uh, Thin the driver, then Texas Cloverleaf and Big Swole wins. Yeah, I liked how uh, Tasha did the ragging in the headlock. That was quite nice. Other than that, yeah. And, uh, uh, you'd imagine a small was a man of the match in that bad boy. I would imagine so, yeah. Um, <coughs> then we had Matt Seidel versus Christopher Daniels. Nice match up there, I think, for for a dark. Yeah, like, it was pretty good. One of those matchups no, we've been talking about, like, for me, when now you win, you don't, who's going to win? Like, who's going to win that? That's a good matchup type thing. Good wrestling match. Like there was no major like moments in it or anything like that, but it was genuinely a good back and forth of two technicians. Of the yeah. Match. I mean, hundred percent. But I, I got a couple of notes on this. Uh, started off with a handshake, some real nice back and forth between them, like on the mat, headlocks, blah 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 blah. Uh, jumping, standing, jumping, spin kick by Seidel. Seidel was sick. Loved that. Uh, sidewalk head slam by Seidel. Where he he kind of just as a sidewalk slam, but then flips him on the head. That went nice. Uh, and then TH2 come out as a distraction. Christopher Daniels goes for the angel, uh, winning the angel wings, and it's reversed into a pin, which he looked as though he dumped on his head a little bit there. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Matt Seidel for the win. Yep, nice match. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a good match. It was a good match. Like I said, there wasn't anything like spectacular in it, except for if you wanted to watch a real good technical match from AEW, that would be one to go back to and watch. Yeah. Pretty good. Again, like I've talked about, two reasonable reasonable players matched up each other against each other on dark, not just having a green versus a vet like all the time. Yeah. Nice. And big ups to Tony Khan and Coney. If you are listening, fifty five minutes is just perfect. This five or six <laughs> matches yeah. thing, much better than sixteen matches. Two uh, blue. Next oh, up. I've got a, on top of that. Fuck Vince. Fuck Vince. Um, next up, we had um, um, Michael Naka 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 Zawa versus Brandon Cutler. Yeah, I knew the uh, outcome of this match before it happened. Uh, I didn't, but I did because I I, I kind of guessed it. Yeah. I just I just thought well, I, you know Cutler's had his win now. Naka Zawa is a person I can afford to lose. Why not? Like, mm. no, I seen a spoiler, man. Nah, fair enough. Anyway, um, Cutler hits a reverse DDT. Uh, yep. Cutler driver into the guard. Uh, Cutler driven into the guardrail, taking out two crowd members slash wrestlers. Yeah. Um, Nakazawa hits a spear, but then 
Cutler hits the TVK and Cutler gets the win. Yeah, there was a little bit in the match. Uh, Nakan oiled up the ropes, so trying to get uh, Cutler to get counted out. Yeah, true. And then at the end of the match, and he actually tried to grab the ropes and slipped off from his own oil. Mm-hmm. So, don't know if that needed to be said, but, you know, part of the match. It is a Nakazawa match. Yeah, Cutler winner. It was all right. Nice, nice display by uh, Cutler again. Uh, comedy match, comedy match, yeah. Um, then we uh, had a Kaz promo. Well, then we had the Kaz promo, which I liked. Again, reiterating that he is one of the best in the game and he, it's about time he started getting some gold for it, basically. Saying he was the best in the game this time. Yeah. Which, yeah. mate, I'd love to see Kaz get some single gold. Yeah. Definitely. It'd be nice to see him go, for the, uh, go through all of it, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's had the tag, haven't he, no? Yeah. Yeah. He was tagged yeah, tag. Scorpio, so go, go for the TNT and then go for the AEW. Yeah. Do it the right way, you know? Yeah. But um next up we had Ariel Deman- Dominguez versus Griff Garrison. Uh Ariel Dominguez making his debut. Yep. Oh like, my my notes on this. Torture yeah. rack squash match. Yeah. Biggest squash match in AEW history for a green because Griff Harrison is still reasonably green. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. That's, it's, it wasn't even a case of like, oh, well, who was going to win this match? <laughs> it was just more the case of, yeah, okay, this what's going to happen here? It's going to be a maybe a tidy face off sort of thing, but no. It was, it was like one swoggle uh, versus the Great Cali. Yeah. After the match, Lance Archer comes out. Jake says a mocks. And Kingston won like a couple. And then uh, Lance Archer gives it all. I'm going to destroy you all. I'm going to take you all out. Your blah, family. Blah, blah. Good promo again. Yeah. Nice promo again. It, yeah. Funny where uh, Jake was like, why didn't you throw him over the top rope, Lance? Why didn't you throw him over the <laughs> top rope? <laughs> do, do you want another go in there? <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that, man. Apparently, a little bit of news. Or should I just save it for after? Uh, no, go it's for it. About- it's about Jake Roberts. Okay. Um, he's apparently come out and said that he's got, can't remember what it was, CPOD or something like that, it's something like emphysema. Okay. But apparently he can only talk for like 20 seconds at the most now and then he needs oxygen. So, but you, you can hear in his voice when he's like that. I know he's been like that for years, but it just gets worse and worse now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's the reason for Archer doing more speaking. Mm. Fair enough. So what do we have next? We have, we have next? Sean Maluda and Rising This is Eva Luno and Stu Grayson at the Dark Order This was one of them that I didn't write the name of it first of all and I had to just kind of be like oh, what's, that? what's that guy with the bandana called? <laughs> I, oh, I kicked to the face of Sean Maluda I was like ha ha <laughs> Sean I had a feeling it was him though but I don't, we don't wrestle that often Um Uno ripping Ryzen's nose, that's my first note. Grabbing his face, pulling it across his face, because it is big nose. A uh, sick neck breaker to stew by Ryzen. Yeah, that was a beast. Ripcord, ripcord flatliner. <clears throat> Finish. Yeah. Nothing spectacular. Yeah. Stu Grayson didn't stand out as much as I thought he should in this match, which he normally just does, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. I think it was, it was a very short match again, where Stu Grayson normally builds into a match, like. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But yeah, um, reasonable. Ripcord flatliner, man, a sec. Yeah. Wicked man, that is. Fair play. Um, next up, we had Trevor Reed versus Ricky Starks. Did you hear um, the commentary on Trevor Reed's name? <laughs> yeah, Trevor Lee. Uh, Trevor Lee, it's Trevor Lee, <laughs> Alex Reed. <clears throat> Alex Reed's an MMA fighter, isn't he? Yeah. Jordan's. But yeah, Trevor Reed versus Ricky Starks, the absolute Ricky Starks. And it was Trevor Reed, Alex Reed, and Trevor Lee's AEW debut. Yeah. All in one. All, all in one. <laughs> yeah. My first note, the uh, delayed suplex from the, the ropes, which Starks looks like he struggled to do. Yeah. Huge spear, absolute fucking huge spear is the way he kept on bouncing back. Rochambeau for the finish. Yeah, exactly. It was pretty much a squash match. Uh, the other guy, Trevor Reed, did have a little bit of a little bit of offense, but that was 
reached as also a rugby yeah. stag winner. Pretty much, and that was uh, that was the end, wasn't it? Oh, was no, it? One more, oh no, there was one more match, the mini main event of the evening. Yeah, which was. I'll say straight away before Lee Johnson needs to up his gear a little bit. Yeah, but like, his trunks are making him look more like a greenhorn than he is actually. Yeah. So I think he, he needs to up his like gear a, slightly, man. A standard independent wrestler's gear, like. Hmm. Yeah, just I don't know, just something a bit more embezzled on his on his gear, like do you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> part of the nightmare, nightmare like family some... now, bro. Got some money, you know. Huh? He's part of the nightmare family now. He's got got a goal up it, hasn't he? Well hopefully, mate, do you know what I mean? Maybe Cody's got some uh, oversized hand me downs. <laughs> you know, give them to Sandra, she can do some stitching. <laughs> like a ninja. Yeah. But anyway, oh. we had uh, Lee Johnson versus Chucky T. Uh, accompanied by Trent and Orange Cassidy. Nice, bud. Good, good little uh, display, this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my, first note, my first note was a double stumper off the top by Chucky T. Yeah. Oh, uh, there was a um, nice, nice back to back by Chucky T. Uh, soul food by Chucky T. Then the the blue thunder up bomb by Johnson. A beastie sit out power bomb by Chucky T. Uh, Falcon Arrow gets Falcon Arrow gets a two count for Chucky T. Which apparently nobody kicks out of Falcon Arrow. <laughs> well, when every other wrestler does it as a B move, yeah. they do. Unfortunately, um, top rope double stomp by Chucky T. <laughs> that was my first note. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stall, stall, no, Steff pile driver by Trekkie T. Then, no, I missed that. I knew it happened, I missed it. Uh, it was nice, man. Nice. And yeah. then uh, Trekkie T hits the finish. Best friends, high five Lee Johnson when he does his dive. <laughs> and then a uh, new finisher from Trekkie T. Yeah. It's quite um, unique. Yeah, it looked quite brutal. Maybe slightly botchy for the first time he's done it. Yeah. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, it look, certainly looked different. Just grab him by their side, spin him upside down, drop him on it. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chucky, you know, walk into Chucky e. Cheese, Chucky e. T grabs a, a chuckling G and drops a chuckling G on his <laughs> head. Couldn't think of anything right that luckily me then at the end. Um, yeah, uh, Chucky e. T then does a best friend hug to Lee Johnson and leaves. Yeah. And Trent's kind of like, oh, what's... What's going on, we? I can't get my hands in. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> Bring my hands in, screaming. Yeah, so, uh, bit of a breakdown there, I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know why, because nothing is really, nothing has really started anything, right? Might just be frustration you know? from not winning the goal. Maybe. Maybe, but it wasn't really a title shot, though, was it? No, I know, but like just frustration of like, I know maybe it was like he's seen him high fiving him outside and that pissed him off. That, yeah, that's that's the only thing I can think of. Like, because Orange was the one who high fived him first, and Trent was like, "What are you doing?" And then he was like, yeah. "Oh fuck it, but then." And maybe get Chucky e. T's mum coming in, going to Trent, going, "Oh look, you you really hurt him." <laughs> but you're not saying like that, like that'd be <laughs> hilarious. You really hurt my boy. <laughs> well, Oh, sorry, Miss Brett. I, I don't know what's, what I've done. When, when you are fucking those other boys up there, I just think that make Trent feel or Chucky yeah. feel. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I've been there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, before we do the pay per view, which is what we're moving on to now, is the Full Gear 2020 pay per view in lockdown, motherfuckers. In lockdown, Biatch. If. We're in lockdown, but over there they had a thousand, they had a thousand fan members. Yeah, social fan distance. Members? With what the mass. fuck is that? <laughs> no, you're actually going to sack on them the universe. <laughs> <laughs> fan members, mate. That's the weirdest thing everywhere. Uh, what the fuck am I saying? I am so fatigued, man. Um, yeah, before we do the full year 2020 pay per view, uh, what are your predictions? Uh, right then. Yes. Oh, this is. It is. Um, 
Huh? Or should we just not bother with them? Uh, do you want to do them? We'll do them as the match. So before the match, I predicted so and so, but the match was. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before the actual pay per view, we should do the buy in. Yeah, uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Uh, oh, oh, fuck the predictions, man. It's just going to slow everything down. Yeah, right. <laughs> it yeah. will probably slow everything down. So, yeah, first match to buy in of the pay per view was Alison K, formerly known as Sienna in TNT, versus Serena TNA. Deeb. Miss... What? In TNA, not TNT. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so I meant the same fact, bro. <laughs> I am so proud. Uh, versus Serena Deeb, who is the NWA Women's Champion. And it was for the title. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah, I got a lot of notes on this pay-per-view man, fair play. Yeah. Um, and then it gets to, like, the Bucks match, and it's like, ah, oh, right. I yeah. Know, where do I stop writing notes <laughs> while I'm sleeping? Um, yeah, Serena Deeb from the beginning, tying up uh, Alison Kay. Uh, nice push from like pushing and slaps back and forth between them I thought that was proper good man yeah Sound really well both of them like I, I think a couple of them were genuine like right we'll give each other like three free slaps during the match yeah you know couple of, we'll give each other a few receipts type thing yeah uh, nice neck breaker on uh, Serena Deep sitting down on the apron with a neck breaker yeah to um, that's okay that was nice nice roll up by Deep quite unique if you've got any other stuff, man, don't forget to chuck it in, like. Yeah, backstabber by Deeb was sweet. Yeah, uh, very n- cool. Nice set-up powerbomb by Alison K. Off the floor as yeah. well. Beastie Spinebuster as well by Alison K. I thought, thought that was a bit scrappy, that one. Um, like, it, it looked good, but it just looked a bit scrappy. Yeah. A swinging neckbreaker into a hanging neckbreaker by Deeb. The, yeah, uh, nice. The Alabama, Alabama Slam was sick by Alison yeah. K. Um, Alison K hits her finish, which is the AK-47, but Deeb rolls out of the ring. I, I called it the Twist Up Rochambeau. <laughs> I'm sure of the name of it. AK-47. Yeah, very cool. I just uh, remember that so, because that's the only... So it's, it's like a variation of a Styles Clash. Yeah, that's why I've written Modified Styles Clash. I was like, oh, oh, that's sick, man. AJ Styles should use that. <laughs> the way your arms were poking out from the sides, like, it was cool. Um, yeah, and then a serenity lock for the finish by Serena Deeb. Yeah. Serena Deeb wins, and I went with Alison K, man of the match. I am a fucking pain. Oh, shit. Hold fire. Hold fire. Oh, I got Who? Alison K, man of the match for me. I went Serena Deeb. And I had uh, two. Marvellous moments. Motherfucking M&Ms. Um, after the match, Thunder Rosa comes out. They face off. Uh, I, I mean, Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa face off. That was it. Good yeah. match, bit of everything. Deeb is a very impressive wrestler. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I think Addison Kay would be worth signing as well. To rep the uh, the women's division a little bit. Do you know why I think it is with Serena Deeb that WWE didn't like? What's that? She hasn't got uh, she hasn't got that like perfect youthful look about her. No, she looks she looks so like a man. tired a bit like a tired man in a way. Not yeah, a bad way. Like a real... Yeah, not a bad way. Yeah, but she doesn't look like a, a supermodel. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's what I love about her. Man. She just looks like a normal person. Yeah. And when I said tired, Mim, I didn't, I didn't mean anything by her look. She's a very pretty woman and all that. I'm not saying anything like that. No, she looks normal, mate. She looks as though, like, oh, she's just woke up, like, do you know what I mean? It's, she haven't got, like, five people putting her makeup on for her. And she haven't got, like, yeah. you know, unlimited money to give her, like, these pep drugs that keep her, like, feisty, like all the other celebrities you see. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, she looks like a real person. I, I appreciate that about her, anyway. But, um, yeah, moving on. To the main show. To the main show of the pay-per-view. <laughs> to what you paid your money for. Yeah, boy. I watched it on Fight TV. Um, Which, if you pause it for any amount of time whatsoever, it cuts you off. 
It's great. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, very surprised at the opening match of this. Hmm. Very surprised. I know. I was like, holy shit, man. Fair play. Yeah. But what a fantastic match. Yeah, I mean, I, I like we always say they open up with they open up dynamite with a cracker, and then yeah. it looks like they're going to do the same with the pay per views because that was like, I was thinking maybe that could have been the main event, you know what I mean? Because that was the match probably with the most hype around it. I don't know. I think the Kingston Mox was much more of a fierce build, but longer, yeah, for Hangman and Omega. But I, I think it should have been certainly the one before. The main event. Yeah, that's what I mean. I got up there like, because it was definitely one of the wins that the fans were looking forward to the most. It was between like I would... it was between that and the Jericho match. I think that people were looking forward to the most. I think what they should have opened with was what got popped up from the buy it. it should have been yeah, Orange and John Silver and Orange. That's exactly why, folks. I thought they those two could have stole the show. And they did steal the show as well. They yeah. had a cracking match. So. It would have been a brilliant opening match. Or oh, Cody and Derby. Yeah. But being a title, maybe not. But anyway, let's get into it, man. It was a brilliant mm. match. Um, Omega versus num- uh, Hangman for the number one contendership for the AEW title. Uh, my Don- prediction was Kenny Omega. My prediction was Kenny Omega and Don Callis from Impact was on commentary. Yeah. JR, Tony Excalibur on a commentary as well. Uh, no handshake to start the match off. That was pretty. Yeah, pretty Ken, uh, set, Kenny set in the offered and Hangman match. was like, nope. Yeah, Hangman and it's <laughs> Omega straight up the high top, straight across the neck. Yeah, that was nasty. I liked how for the first like five ten minutes they were like counting in each other's moves. Yeah, just like, evading, evading everyone each other's moves. It was like bump, reverse, bump, reverse, bump, reverse. It was sick. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Kenny going for the. Terminator dive, hangman, big boot. Yeah. Stops it from happening. Um, nice suplex off the middle by hangman. Guardrails, few slaps. I don't know if you've got anything elaborated on that. No. Nope. Uh, Kenny head first into the guardrail at one point. Yeah. Uh, Kenny's move off the guardrail. That was sick, mate. He kept on getting chucked into the guardrail, yeah. chucked into the guardrail. And then the last one, he was like, ah, no, fuck this, man. And the rail had moved back enough that it was supported by the wall so he could jump up on it and flip yeah. But I thought that was very, very well thought out, that. It was cool as fuck, mate. Fair play. Send uh, me on kind of it. Oh, Kenny Omega, you know what he does is, you, uh, you can't escape. Yeah. He, he, and he does the front flip, and then he gets up, he slipped on that, and then, like, rather than get up, he was just like, oh, sat around for a little bit, like, just selling it, because he, he stumbled on it, didn't he? Yeah. So he sold it like, oh, sold uh, yeah, his knee, didn't he? Yeah, I thought he sold that real well. Yeah. Then you uh, went up the second rope, uh, moonsault anyway. Didn't yeah. He? Then uh, the second rope spring roll clothesline by Hangman while Kenny was on the apron. Yeah, that was sick, mate, the way he flipped. Yeah. It was uh, fucking awesome. And then Kenny flips from the ring to the outside on the page. Beast. Doing the terminate. Uh, B trigger on page when going for uh, the buckshot lariat. That was sick. Yeah, I just wrote reverse on a favourite for that. Yeah. Uh, just before this, Omega had started grabbing the head of Hangman as well, which he hadn't been doing all the way through the match. Which again, quite like that, the psychology of it. Yeah. Uh, power bomb on the ramp, and then yeah. uh, then a pop up power bomb by Page was beast. In the ring, yeah. Yeah, nice t- that was, man. Tiger Driver by Kenny was sick. Yeah, just after the V trigger. Yeah. Um, the Tiger Driver, the eight guard, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hang- Hangman hits the dead eye after a reversal clinic. I mean, they were reversing loads of moves back and forth again. Yeah. And then he hit the fucking the dead eye. <laughs> when you said that, then I was like, reversal clinic. Not a damn move. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 2B triggers by Kenny. Then the the one-winged angel. But to be fair, Hangman was trying to fight out of that one-winged angel the whole time, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. Very fresh. Real good touch. Yeah. And that dead eye man was fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, what a fantastic match, man. Yeah. Awesome match and an awesome finish as well. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, I, I love the finish because it was just so realistic and it's not something you see often. It's like normally yeah. you get them in the finish, I say, you know, like there's no fight back. As soon as they get in there, they just flop like into the finish. Like, Yeah. But um, both both men shone yeah. 100% in this match. Yeah, psychological, psychological was immense. Um, the yeah. in ring quality was immense. Everything was on point, like everything. I think Hangman needs to like just ride on the coattails of that solid performance for a while now. Mm. Just like, well, yeah, I, I didn't beat Kenny Luck, but fucking this close. Yeah. This close. You know what I mean? So, but um, Kenny Pat's Hangman at the end kind of gives it all. And then, uh, yeah, that's all she wrote. Sick yep. match. And then we had, then we had the orange and silver match. Well, before <clears> that, I had uh, Kenny Man in my match. Oh yeah, my man, my bad. Yeah. And um, I had nine Yowie Wowie moments. I had Omega. Yeah, that's what I said, Kenny. Nine. I have matched you, sir. I had nine also. Nice. Always good when we match on high numbers, man. Yeah. yeah, always. Uh, yeah, next up we had. Is there any other promos that I've missed? Nope. Uh, next up was Orange Cassidy versus John Silver of the Dark Order, who is fucking awesome right now. Four. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, yeah, do you want to hit this one off? Yeah, man. Um, pocket drop kick by Cassidy. I think what I mean by that is he's got his hands in his pocket when he does it. <laughs> um, Silver tears the pockets off Cassidy's jeans. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. Silver beals Cassidy across the ring twice. That was nice. Showing off his power. That's like a big guy move normally. Like you'd see the Undertaker do that to Rey Mysterio. Obviously, yeah, Orange Cassidy and John Silver ain't that much difference, but the power the guy's got for a little guy, he's like yeah. a Taz or a Benoit man. He's an animal, man. Yeah. Um, Silver uh, powers out of the Tornado DDT into a brain buster. That was sick. That was quality, mate. He just killed his momentum and then deadlifted him. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, Silver... Oh, Silver bounces... Silver bounced off the buckles, sweet camera angles by EW on that, fair play. Where yeah. Orange Cassidy's smashing his heads off the turnbuckles and the camera's actually behind the turnbuckles so you could see the... Yeah. Like, that was sick. I love that camera, man. That's what I mean, sick no, angles, fair play to camera. EW. The camera, right. I love that camera angle. Yeah, fair Wait. play to EW, it's sick. Um, top, uh, top crossbody and... A spring, string and DDT by Orange. Yeah, very nice. Go on, crack on. The uh, tornado, DD, tornado DDT by Orange as well. After that, then um, a single-handed gorilla press slam by uh, John Silver. Beast. Very beast. Very beast. Um, Johnny Hunky. Silver moves clocked into the head scissors take over. Then a missing Yuka driver by Orange. A beastie kicks by Silver. Fair play. Aggressive as fuck. Fucking right. They were proper. Real looking like. Um, He's always had some run around. Yeah. The spinning doctor gets two for John Silver. And yeah. then the Orange punch out of nowhere. Then the, the beach break. Bang. Orange wins. Yeah. And I've gone with uh, John Silver. Man of the match. John Silver, man of the match. I had four moments, four M&Ms. Six motherfucking moments. Six. Goes over, goes over. Um, very entertaining match. Silver is a very big character. Yeah, he's got everything, mate. His face and expressions are low. I don't even know I, at the end, like, I know that he's a big character. I could say it any time. I still write it down. Just the facial expressions are me. It's daggers. So, uh, yeah. Good match. Yeah, brilliant match. Good times. Good times. 
would have been a good match to have on the buy-in. I think because it would have, you know, if you if you hadn't seen AEW before, that would have been a hell of a match to see, like Jimmy. Yeah, definitely. But uh, not that Serena Deeb and Alison K wasn't good because it was obviously, but. For what was picked first, it would have been entertaining as fuck. Yeah. You know. That was good, I enjoyed it. Yeah, very good match. There wasn't a bad match on this card, to be honest. No. Wow. There was one. I think the only bad one on it was Sheeta versus okay. Nyla. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was bad, it was just boring. Yeah. Because they've fought yeah. so many times already. They're, they're like the go-to rivalry in the women's division, so... Yeah. And because it's only a year old, I shouldn't be getting bored of matches already. Yeah. They didn't have no build with Nyla, though, did they? They just kind of had Vicky Guerrero coming out shouting a lot. But it didn't really make any statements. Like, it wasn't a big enough a big enough statement made when Vicky Guerrero come and... And, like, she being a part of Nyla Rose's thing didn't make any sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. She didn't need it, like, but anyway, we'll, we'll discuss that when we get to it, man. Yeah. So, next uh, up, we had the TNT title Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson. Well, it started off with the entire friggin' Nightmare family. Yeah. Uh, the new adoptions and all. Uh, with yeah. This is uh, Darby Allen. It's a nice build up. No sting, the people. Oh. No sting. No sting needed. No, of course not. Why would there be anything? It's just fucking it's just stupid. I know. It doesn't make any sense. It's because they fake, they both they both paint their face and they both sit in the rafters. Obviously, they must be brothers. <laughs> no, dad, father <laughs> and uncle. Yeah. God, you, you know their stars. You know it's their father and uncle. Yeah, that's true. My bad, my bad. Um, they got a relationship like Harry Potter and his family. After some back and forth in the ring, Cold, oh, by the way, it's for the TNT title, and it is a 60-minute time limit. 60-minute which surprised me. It didn't, it didn't, because it, it, it kind of cut out the obvious of the count-out then. Uh, the, not the count-out, the, uh, the time limit draw, like. Because that's oh, happened right, a, okay. few t- a few times now with uh, the TNT title, have not it, so. Uh, I suppose. But, um, yeah, uh, after some back and forth, Cody rolls on the outside uh, to have a word with Van Anderson, obviously showing frustration. Then uh, Cody hammers Derby over the top rope onto the ramp with a hammer lock on. He sort of fucking lo- just launches him, doesn't he? Yeah. Over, oh, with his arms. That was beast, mate. Yeah, that was sick. Uh, Derby goes for a spring- springboard arm drag, but Cody just fucking yanks him down. Put us on the arm, the arm breaker like that was sick. Yeah, it was done nice and sweet because you know what, Darby did his usual thing and he looked like as he does beautiful, just fucking flying across the ring, and Cody just like yanking a like a cat yanking a beard out of the sky, just yam, yeah. have it. Hey, when I, when he did that, I was like, oh, oh that looked fucking sick. Like mm. and then straight away I thought, oh, it's Darby, that's all good. Mm. It was <laughs> like if anybody else had done it, it would almost be like, no, you're not allowed to do that, sir. You can't, you can't. You're not allowed to jump in the pool that way here, sir. <laughs> no bombing in my pool. Um, but, uh, Cody follows that up with a hammerlock power slam. Obviously working on the arm a bit. Um, Darby yeah. evades the top rope moonsault. Which Cody's like me. He can't quite do a moonsault. He always twists in the air a bit. Yeah, and look over his uh, left hand side. Yeah. Um, Dab, Darby evades the top of Moonsault. Uh, Canadian Destroyer by Darby. What are we at now, man? And my next part is Darby pulls off the middle turnbuckle pad. Yeah, carry on. Uh, oh, yeah. Right, I know where we are. And then the next... Cody told... Anne Anderson told Cody off as well for the press-ups. Mm-hmm. Stop being cocky. He didn't say what, didn't he? he, At one point, he was like, What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, he kept on uh, scorning him, like. Mm. Yeah, go on. Then um, we had the Avalanche Crossroads off the top rope, which was sick. 
Mate, that was fucking unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> that was fucking unbelievable, mate. I wrote fucking brutal. Yeah. Like, Dar- Darby is very, very lucky, mate, that his arm didn't fucking catch. Yeah. Because his arm was out and flailing, like, to me. Not it good. It was beast, man. Uh, oh, but Darby, unbelievable. The, the momentum takes Darby all the way to the ropes, so he pretty much gets a rope break. Um, yeah. Cody carries Darby on his back to the top rope. And then just backdrops off the top rope. That was sick. Yeah. I know Darby's only a little guy, but it's still fucking hell. It takes that level a lot of strength. Oh, yeah. Pick someone up from the floor and then carry up a top, carry him up a top rope, lad. Falling back is on easy. And asking for. Yeah. Just giving it all. Bring it. Which I thought, again, showing massive heart by Darby Orlin. Yeah. Um, at this point, uh, Cody takes off his uh, his weight belt and he goes, he's going to use it. And then, yeah. like, the referee sort of takes it off and drops it on the floor and then Darby uses it to trip him up, sweeps his leg That's with the cool. belt. Yeah. And uh, Darby hits a stunner and then the coffin drop. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Back and forth pins. Yep, yeah, there's the last And then we have a new champion, motherfucker. Yeah, man. You chap. Oh. oh. I got a poor connection at the moment. After a plethora of pins, Darby gets the free. Darby wins. New TNT champion. New face of TNT. And uh, Darby, man. Match. I went with Cody, man of the match. Fucking would do, wouldn't you? Do you know, I've, I've ruined my paper now. I just wrote a cross next to Darby, and then you, you disappointed me. I had Job five. Done. Five, five time, five time, five time. I have seven. Seven in this round, Um After the match, Cody gives Darby the belt while he's on his knee, saying, basically, look after this, mate. Mm-hmm. You know, thought that was a very nice touch by Cody. Well surprised, but called it. I did say Darby was going to win. I don't know about you. I went with Cody. <sighs> I went with Cody, my missus went with Darby, the bitch. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was a time, mate. I thought the time was right for Darby. He's, he's earned it, mate. He's I think the time is right, but I thought it was a bit early for Cody to lose it. Because he's only just won it back. Nah, it's, I think it's a perfect time. I just don't like um, potato handling with titles, man. Say again? I just don't like potato handling with titles. Firelighter handling. You are, you are, you are, you are. Do you know what I mean? It's like... So, mate, he did have it. He had it from the beginning. Like, he lost it to Brody Lee because obviously he went off and did some filming, blah, 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 blah. Good person to give it to. Yeah. They've taken it back. But he's still had com- uh, competitors over the time. But him and Darby have always had this rivalry. And if you watch it and the psychology of it, Darby always got better each time that he lost mm-hmm. against Cody. Like, no, I understand that. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying the outcome of it. I think that's it. It doesn't bother me too much. It's just the yeah. fact that Brody had it for a short time. And then Cody's now had it for a short time. I know Darby's probably going to have a long reign. I just like I said, I don't like too much title switching too quick. I think it diminishes the title a bit. Especially I, I when... I think they've done perfect Especially, the especially when it's the title... Like WWE. Especially when they're promoting it as the title that matters at the moment. Oh. Do you know what I mean? And the man at the moment in AEW that matters is Darby Orlin because, let's be fair, whenever, he, whenever his music starts... Uh, yeah. Boom, 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 yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, no, I'm not disagreeing with any of this, bro. I'm no. just saying. That's my only point, mate. Is I just don't like the switching so quick. That's it. That's all. Otherwise, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. I think no, maybe. I, 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 like it, man. I think maybe for me, it should have been the next pay per view. It should have been Derby. Cody should have had one more big yeah. pay per view match and win, and then Derby. I you mean. I was well impressed, mate. I called it. I thought it was gonna happen. I think a miss is called the Derby as well. But, uh, yeah, happy days. After the match, Taz comes out with uh, Cage and Starks. No, he doesn't. Sorry, Taz comes out and basically tells Derby to leave the ring. Starks and Cage attack Cody and Derby and Anderson. And then Derby gets chucked into the full gear sign, which yeah. reminiscent of uh, last year's All Out, where 
one of them went through the sign. I think it was Omega, actually. Yeah, it was Omega, uh, actually. And then they go to jam his arm in the car door, and Will Hobbs comes out for the same. Yeah, Will Hobbs is a steel chair. Will Hobbs on a pay-per-view. Yeah, he's starting to build up slowly. Yeah. Getting Johnny his look right, man. Yeah. They, they gotta they gotta get his demeanour and his look right. And then not, that's that's not to say like, oh well that doesn't make it real then because wrestlers can't go out as themselves. Yeah, they can go out as themselves, but they do people still have training all the way through their lives yeah. as a young man. You know, there's ways to conduct yourselves and there's ways not to conduct yourself. Like for example, you know? some people wouldn't necess- might not necessarily act natural on camera. So they wouldn't be mm-hmm. being themselves anyway. So you say, you know, let them be themselves. If they sometimes you have to train to be yourself because you have to train to ignore the camera type thing. Exactly. It's 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 just life lessons, yeah. isn't it? It's like, like you know, going back again for when we were rapping and stuff like that. Before we were rapping in front of people, it was so easy to rap. But then as soon as people were involved, it made it difficult until yeah. you learn how to. Exactly. You just progress and you you practice, you get better, but you learn life lessons. Like it's like. I learned so much from from loads of stuff when it comes to rapping. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know? And it, I would say, you know, if I was still doing it full-time and stuff like that and, and mess around with it, I would still be learning to this day. Yeah, definitely. You know? 100%. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Will Hobbs, nice to see him on a pay-per-view. Yeah. Getting some, getting some push. That's so, right, what do have next? Uh, next up was an uh, interview... With uh, Dusty, uh, with Dash Gonzalez interviewing Dustin and QT. Yeah, they addressing Butcher and Blade and Bunny. Yeah, and they challenge him to a bunkhouse match uh, on next week's Dynamite. And what is a bunkhouse match? I don't really know, mate, to be honest. I asked my missus, I said, oh, well, I said, Google it. Do you know what? I said, Google it. Do you know what I did? I said, so what to say? Cowboy boots, something or other, and a checkered shirt. I don't fully understand it. I was like, ah, I don't know. I I don't know. I remember they, they used to have a bunk, they had like some sort of bunkhouse brawl match before, but it was on the back of a truck. So I don't uh, think it's going to be that. I hope not. Uh, that would be dread. That's so good to watch. Yeah. And then we've uh, got um, Phoenix versus Pentagon Ch- Junior 2. That's also happening on Dynamite. Yeah, that's going to be good. And we've got, he is clear to wrestle. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Ty Conte with Anna J uh, versus Red Velvet with Dustin, uh, Dustin? Brandy Rhodes. Brandy. Brandy going in. Cody going in to Brent. He's going in. <laughs> Any others? Nope, that's it. And then we move on to the Sheeta and Nyla build up hype videos, which wasn't all that good, to be honest, because it wasn't it. No. It's just Mickey Pedro shouting a lot, saying, We're not going to wrestle anybody until you say that you're going to fight me. And then she ended up fighting some other person then the week before, which was crap. Yeah. It's crap. The build-up was crap. <clears throat> Although I have a lot of notes. Yeah, I have quite a lot so, of notes as well. But kick it off, bro. Yeah. Um, strong start by Shida. To, uh, powering over Nyla Rose. Drop kicks and knee strikes by Shida. Shida goes for uh, the chair. But is reversed by Nyla. Where she goes, sets up on the outside, goes for the run. Um Ref shouts at Nyla for grabbing a chair and table, and she's like, oh, well, she just fucking grab one, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All the distraction. Nyla through the guardrail. Uh, Vicky hits Sheeta with a kendo stick. I, I am right in saying, I knew. I yeah. just heard the noise, and I thought, I don't know who was in the kendo, kendo stick, stick. I've just written Vicky smashes her, because I, I was the same. I was writing notes. I just seen Sheeta on the floor and Vicky laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it sounded just like a kendo stick. It sounded like a kendo stick. It looked like a kendo stick after I seen the kendo stick. Yeah, it was a kendo stick. Um, where we at, man? I am, I am gone. Yeah. Uh, Nyla leg trip sheet in the ring. Weird. I don't know what that says. Uh, leg to post to Ny- by Nyla to Sheeta. Focusing on the leg then uh, for a fair bit of the match. I did like the Very way she po- had her in the ring frame. She yeah, like- yeah, I think I... 
That's what you were fucking yeah, trying to say. Yeah, trap sheeted in the ring wires. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a very poor splash by Nyla. Mm-hmm. A bit of fucking shit. Uh, then she bit Sheeda's knee for some reason, didn't get that. <laughs> uh, deadlift suplex uh, to, to Nyla Rose by Sheeda. That was sick. Yeah, that was beast. Fair play. Nyla grabbing Sheeda's knee to get out of a, a lock. Like, you know when you like they grab her? Their heads, yeah. like the big show would grab some of their heads, or Andre the Giant would grab your head, like she grabbed the knee. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, rope attack by uh, rope attack to leg by Nyla it was yeah. quite cool. Where she set it up backwards, normally she jumps on the head and they fall in the ring, but she set it up with the leg. That was quite nice. Uh, still focusing on the leg, Nyla kicked onto the ramp, drop kick to outside by Sheeta. Uh, same to the inside, and then powerbomb pulling off, pulling out of the pin. What? She pulled the rep out too. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, pulled it up out of two, being cocky. Yeah. This is from Sheena. That was uh, Sorry, yes, Nyla. Yeah. And then Falconaro off the top. It was quite cool. Yeah, that was sick. Sheena lifts up Nyla's head, <coughs> this is, this is which cool. I thought was very cool. Yeah, very um, cool. Yeah, a, a real sick, like, kind of anime look to her face man. yeah and then Vicky distracts Sheeta and then I've written distractions then after that so there must have been something else happened, but I can't quite remember the time and then um, uh, she Vicky gone. tries to trip Sheeta but completely messes it you know when they swipe their legs from underneath the ropes yeah she completely messed right. it but Sheeta kind of oh. turned around anyway and went what are you doing with her uh, even still sold it uh, yeah, she didn't actually fall, thank God. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it would have looked awful. Yeah, what happened after that though? Because I, I wrote that bit. All, and I just Aubrey, wrote distraction. Um, Aubrey stops Vicky from using the chair because Vicky goes over ah. to use the chair. Aubrey stops her, and then yeah. uh, a fork and arrow and uh, a Tamashi gets a two for Sheeda, but then Sheeda just basically needs the fuck out of Nyla's face. Needle faces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's keep you up with your face. Mm. Wicked ending, man. Wicked ending. Yeah, kind well, of like, well, look, I've just used all my stuff that I've been training for years to beat you, and you just don't seem to be going down. Now mm. I'm going to resort to sort. <laughs> oh, what's that? Face. Need to face. Need to face. The first thing we learn when we learn English. Need to face. <laughs> If we yeah, were playing play, actually... if we play PlayStation, I button bash, button bash, bam, 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 Agreed. And five M and M's. Yeah, uh, just the three for me. Just the three. <clears throat> After the match, Vicky screams at Nyla. Nyla stands up and basically screams back at her. I'm Nyla Rose. <laughs> and then puts her head down and then walks off looking like something. After out taking of a combat. big slap off Vicky. <laughs> Which I so thought, zero, get over here. I thought after Vicky slapped her, I thought that was it. I thought Nyla was going to smash her. But then I thought at the but same no. time, it's too early. They've only just joined together, so. Yeah, it's a fucking stupid. It's stupid. There's, there's no need for Vicky Guerrero to be Nyla Rose's manager. I mean, I honestly think they were like, fuck, what are we going to do for the women? Because she does beaten Penelope now. It's too early for Britt yeah. Baker. She's already beaten Swall. Who else is left apart from Nyla? Like, like that was the best, that was the best go-to match. But for me, the problem was they fought the last pay-per-view and the rivalry was yeah. built so well for the last pay-per-view, and the match went down so great, there was no point in having a rematch. The only point of it was Vicky Guerrero was there, but like you said, there was no there was no reason for it. No. If, if like Vicky Guerrero had screwed over Sheeda somehow before she became Nyla's manager, maybe, like Jeremy. Yeah. But there was just nothing, and it didn't really go into anything either. They were just like, oh, I'm not going to wrestle until we get a title match. Okay, yeah. and you get a it's rematch. Not even, it's, even like, it's not even like a kind of 
run up to kind of being number one contender meant anything. No, exactly. She beat no one. Exactly. She just kind of maintained her record. Yeah. So, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Sheeta beast. Yeah. Sheeta was awesome in this match. Oh. Uh, when Brandy was out with, um, I've written it as a top note of the thing, when Brandy came out with uh, Nightmare Family in the beginning, yeah. and she was in that white dress, yeah. looked like she had tampon strings hanging out the bottom of it. Fair <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I thought I'd just scan my page. Just what you said. <laughs> I'd get that in there. <laughs> yep, side notes. So, next up, we had the FTR versus the Bucks hype and build videos, which, good build up this one. Yeah, sick build up. No, I, I felt like this match, right, I'll say it before we get into the notes, I felt like it got to about 20 minutes into it, and I was like, oh, this is going on too much now, man. And then it had like a second wind. Mm-hmm. And then by the time it finished, I was like, oh, I don't know, I could watch another five, ten minutes of this. Mm-hmm. It had me, it had me hooked in, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, the first, the first twenty minutes was very, was very, like you say, Shawn, a Shawn Michaels match. Mm. They both just did their moves. There was nothing mm. fresh, like not in a bad way. There was nothing, but there was nothing fresh. It was just B trigger, B trigger, shot machine, shot machine. Yeah. DD, like it was all their their normal basic moves, but then it was yeah. like they kicked into desperation gear, both of them. Yeah. And there's the psychology come into it then. Yeah. You know, fantastic match as well, man. But uh, the Young Bucks stated that they wouldn't challenge for the titles, much like Cody, again, if they lost. Yeah. Which obviously means it was for the AEW Tag Team titles. Yes. Indubitably. But, uh, yeah, the FTR coming out in their pyjamas looking like karate geese. <laughs> They needed a couple of belts around their waist, like Johnny, like in Ken Blackman. Yeah. Steve, Steve Blackman, Steve Blackman. sorry. <clears throat> uh, Steve worth Blackman. noting as oh, well, yeah. uh, Teddy Blanchard was banned from ringside. Yeah. Even though he did come down with them to start off. Yeah. Um, starting off a match, rever- uh, Matt reversing, or very fast reversing of the leg takes out, takedowns by Cash. Every yeah. time he take him down, he then flip him off, take him down, flip him off, take him down, flip him off. Uh, nice, awesome back and forth with Matt. Matt, oh, back and forth. Matt work. Uh, Nick winning it. Where they, I think it was um, Cash and Nick doing loads of back and forth, and at the end, then Nick won it. Yeah, which turned uh, into a double Quran, a double Hurling Quran, and a double drop kick by the Bucks to FTR. Yeah, yep. I was just going to say, have you got something written there? Because all I wrote was Bucks double teamwork. Yeah, <laughs> um, I've got a couple of written this. Then, at this point, the Bucks work Dax's hand. Yeah, is this after or before he punches the ring post? Well, that's when he, they that's when they start working his hand, because he punches the ring post. Yeah, he punches the ring post and then bleeds in it. Yeah. Yeah. Weird that was, man. Yeah. Bit of a strange one, how we got a cut there, like, do you know what I mean? Unless a bone's poking through. I was going to say, unless a bone's rip, that's the only thing I can think of, yeah. Yeah. Unless some of the paint, unless some of the paintwork is scagged on the post. I know it sounds stupid, but paint when it's dry, bend. It'll be like a blip. Like just a, a slice, like you I mean, like a razor slice. Yeah, a rusty razor slice as well. If that, if the paint's peeled off. Mm. But there we go. Um, yeah. Uh, Dax bleeding hand, <coughs> boot in hand of Dax on a corner. I don't know what that is. Matt chokes. I mean, this match was so hard to note. I know, Matt mate. I, 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 I struggled as well. Um, at this point, uh, Dax has gone over to Doc Samson and is getting his hand taped up. Yeah, I got that out in a sec. But uh, Matt's got taken down with a leg trip. Leg yeah. scissor take down and he, Matt's neck slams on the ropes. Yeah. Like a, like a thing, oh, that was fucking brutal, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though he was like, oh, yeah, all right, I'll just roll out the ring. Bit like uh, Enzo Amore, didn't he? Remember when he got whipped into the ropes? Yeah. Yeah. Mate, I'm surprised he wasn't worse off than I like. Um, yeah, Dax probably then goes over to the doctor, so over to you, bro. Um, Dax and Cash take out Mick so he can make a, a tag. It was nice the way they did it, like, you know what I mean, because, like, 
I can't remember who it was, but uh, let's just say Dax was in the ring with uh, Matt fighting it out. Matt was about to get a tag, and uh, Cash just ran around the outside and just started brawling with Matt like out of nowhere, like just started beating the fuck out of him. Like. Guardrail. Yeah. Can you say something like that? Let me introduce you to the guardrail. I think so, yeah. Let me introduce you to the um, Cash crossed body off the apron into the guardrail. And then Matt hits a misdirected spear, which was nice. Yeah. Uh, beastie spear from ring to the outside by Cash. That was sick. Yeah. Um, Swanton and Twist of Fate. Tribute to the Hardy Boys by the Young Bucks. Yeah, it was dead they were, sweet as they fuck. Were everywhere by the commentary, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, BTE trigger by FTR. Yeah. Then uh, Cash shoves off uh off top to the ramp on the outside, and then Nick yeah. jumps off the top rope to. Onto cash from for off off the up from the ring to the outside on the ramp. Uh, I lost where you were. Then I'm up to date now. You you missed one. The uh, Bucks did the three D as well. Did they? Yeah, twice. Well, not only did I miss it on my notes, bro, I missed it in the actual match. <laughs> no, I just as I was trying to catch up and be like, "Oh, where's he two? Where's he two? Oh, there he is!" I went past Bucks hit three D. I was like, "Oh, you haven't mentioned that." Yes. <laughs> yeah, Nick. That's what gave her, man. I was beast. Uh, yeah, and then we had the sharpshooter spot, I think, innit? Yeah. One on the ramp, one in the ring. Very cool. Trying to crawl to each other to help each other out. Yeah. Pulls them back to the centre of the ring. Very cool. Um, yeah, I was getting very tired at this point, man. Another BT, BT trigger then. Uh, and Cash makes a save. Just, just about not getting a three count. Uh, Matt with a chair. I, like, if you've got more, you may just, just um, run it off. Maybe, before so that, just... it was a corkscrew plunger off the top to the outside by Nick. That was sick. Yeah. But yeah, then Matt grabs the chair and everyone's like, no, no, no. And except for FTR, Cash, who was like, uh, Dax, who was like, yeah, come on, hit me. Come on, hit me. Because obviously, he'd win the match and keep the belts. Yeah. And uh, Nick gets thrown through, over, off a table. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they go to throw him <laughs> through the announce table. He didn't. And he like, just bounced away. He almost missed it, though, didn't he? He didn't hit him properly. Like, he, he, he almost threw him over the table. Like. Yeah, he bounced on the corner and slid yeah. off it. Like. Uh, Dak, Dak flips Matt into the spine pile driver. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Where he had, him in the, he had him in the one position and then flipped him around. That's hard to do, that is, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then they take Matt's boot off. Yeah. They start uh, a pound in his leg because they just can't beat the Bucks. And then uh, Matt hits the inverted sharpshooter. <coughs> uh, no, sorry. Figure four. Matt is in the sharpshooter, sorry. And then Nick saves with a 4 5 0. Yeah. Onto uh, Dax. But that was a figure Cash four, not a sharpshooter. Huh? It was a figure four, not a sharpshooter. Made it for figure four, was it? Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Um, yeah, Cash super kick by Matt. Cash goes for the four five zero towards the end of the match, which was very unique to the storytelling of this match. Yeah, and he did it uh, well. Fair play. I've never seen him bust out before, and he fucking done it sick. Yeah, probably probably one of the best four five zero <laughs> that I've seen in quite a while, mate. Mm -hmm. Johnny, better than a lot of people that do it regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, super kick by Matt without his boot. Finish of the match. Yeah. New champions. Yeah. The Bucks win. Did you predict that? No, I had FDR. I had FDR as well. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it really was going to be the case that uh, somewhere down the line, like the fans would be like, "Oh no, we want to see you as the champions." Blah blah blah. And then Tony can come out and go, "Look, I'm overruling it." You know, something yeah. like that. But I expected that FDR win. Uh, yeah, cash, cash man of the match for me. Yeah, agreed. And I had ten moments. And I had nine. Yeah, we are your moments. Uh, after the match, 
Kenny Omega comes out to celebrate. Hangman's hiding up on the rampway. I didn't see Hangman. Yeah, he was up in the tube. Ah. Uh. He was just there drinking his little drink, tucked in on the side, but you could see him if you looked. Which I thought, again, brilliant psychology, brilliant storytelling. Yeah, definitely. Um, sick match, so many moments, could have gone another five, ten minutes. Yeah. He's, you know, absolutely beautiful match. That's a bit of everything. And like you said, they started off with kind of a more of a technical display of what is expected of that type of match between them. Yeah. And then it just went to, again, like you said, shit, man, we've got to fucking do something here. You know, desperation mode. FTR put on the best performance I've seen them put on in a long time. Now, I'm not saying, like, WWE doesn't allow them to, because, let's be fair, when they go to Raw and SmackDown, they don't. But in uh-huh. NXT, I always said in NXT, FTR, like, the revival, they're fucking sick, mate. They're sick. Uh-huh. NXT, they were dope, yeah. like, I mean, that was one of their... It reminded me of that type of performance, like, I mean. Yeah. Because they, oh, be... they are that type of tag team. You look at them and you think, yeah, you're just the wrestlers. You don't, yeah. see, you don't see them doing the high-flying shit and all that like they did. Yeah. But they did it well, man. Fair play. <clears throat> Pardon me. Fair play. They smashed it again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Sandman yeah, tribute. Uh-huh. That was a Sandman tribute. <laughs> yeah. Enter. <laughs> right, moving on, bro. Moving on. Right there, bro. Totally boo, dude. Yeah, man. Pause the motherfucker. <laughs> Dark Order. Dark Order, pause. That was a nice piss. Um, yeah, so moving on. Next matchup was Matt. Uh, Hardy <laughs> first in Sammy Guevara uh, in a, you know, Hardy the final elision match yeah final the elite deletion yeah this was um, on oh, this one huh? very memorable lots of bonkers stuff went on in this <laughs> yeah not as good as what I thought it would be though um Yes and no, I was quite down on this match from the beginning just because I personally, I'm just a bit bored of the whole cinematic match now. And it's nothing to do with yeah. the actual match, it's just because because of the pandemic, it's been done by everyone now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like AJ Styles and The Undertaker done it and it was great. It was an awesome match. Same with this one, it was nothing wrong with it. It wasn't a bad match, I didn't expect any more or any less, it was just... Yeah, like we've had the stadium stampede again. There's another one. Like, I mean, we've had so much of these matches recently, and it's no one's fault. It's the pandemic. Yeah. It's just, again, like I said, I wasn't really hyped for this match. Yeah. Fresh beverage. Um, well, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Sammy, Sammy G rocks up in a Spanish golf, golf cart, which I liked. Hoppin, hoppin. Then Matt rocks up yeah. with a monster truck. Have that, bitch. What the hell does that say? Oh, Neo turns up first. Yeah. Neo turns up with Matt Hardy and warns him, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, and then a the monster truck. Yeah. Drives over Sammy and he gets out. Gets out alive, god damn it. <laughs> the pesky farmers. Um... Sammy's moonsault off the truck, off the wheel, was quite nice. Yeah. Fighting through the woods, fighting outside the house, side, with suplex on lawn. And they, the commentators made a big thing of it. Ah, oh, do you know what it feels like to be suplex on lawn? And they're probably all like, ah, no. It does hurt, mind. Remember when I done the, when you, when you, when you said to me when we were on the trampoline, you were like, Doors, do a, do a rolling thunder. All right, bro. And I done it off the trampoline, I was like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> me, me and the other one regularly used to fucking suplex on grass and shit mate but proper hard mate all the time and on concrete when we had that massive brawl from outside mm. my mother's up all the way around the block and back yeah brutal brutal mate but um uh yeah they were suplex on the lawn 
And then Hardy pulls out some crazy ass baby on a stick. <laughs> what the fuck was that? The, I... the staff of Rats and Nora or something. <laughs> that was just fucking weird. It was that. <laughs> Here's my baby staff. <laughs> it's the arm from Scary Movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's odd, mate. Very odd. Like, um, and then they go to the ring over in the centre and then Matt Hardy had some side effects quite nice power bombs through a table don't know who that was to Matt yeah yeah no so, uh, Sammy G got put through the table that was yeah. quite nice proud and powerful then attack which Sammy was aware of this from the beginning and had his little hey Scotty beat me up and be there when I need you to yeah. <clears throat> um, I believe they call it yeah. smart watch yeah, and then a uh, private party gets rung, and they're like, the, it looked, it almost like to me, right, when they were in the in the car, you yeah. remember the the old game they used to get when you were like three or four, and it was just like a little steering wheel with a gear stuck on the right hand side. You used to have a, a little screen, and the cars used to go back and forth. Like, yeah, it was like the like cinema. It's like it was kind of like a green screen effect. The car didn't actually move. The screen just rolled forward, didn't it? Like that, and you and had you, to just turn the steering wheel to move the car, like. Yeah, it, it, for some reason, right, when they were sat in the car, all I could see was that. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's a private party, like, they're not going to be able to drive. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Honestly, like, yeah, but it was like so, like, Scooby-Doo. But, uh, yeah, anyway, private party were, were phone called. They said they're on the way there, private party and proud and powerful, have a bit of a brawl, which took away from the match straight away because it's like, all oh, right, okay. You know, <clears throat> that's not really much of... Sammy and Matt here, like, do you know what I mean? And it, then it became a match of his own. Yeah. But it worked out, boy. And then Matt obviously fucks off and comes back with some fireworks. <laughs> well, it was fucking brilliant, the fireworks segment. Yeah. Wicked, all of it, mate. Do you want to go out and cry on there, man? Um, carry on, I'll find my spot. <laughs> I got freaking more. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt fires off the fireworks, and Matt ends up chasing Sammy off with the fireworks, just basically going shooting for all like. Um, Gangrel shows up with Hurricane Helms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was very cool. I've yeah. seen Gangrel in years, man. He used to be one of my favourite wrestlers. Do you know what he I is now? Huh? Do you know what he is now? Uh, Vicar or something like that. A porn director. Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I want a job. Yeah, I, I'm even more envious. <laughs> Gangrel's awesome. Uh, yeah, Hurricane gets chucked into the water, comes back as the interviewer, Hurricane. Yeah. But I thought, you know, that was that was obviously going to happen. I was expecting Sammy to get chucked in the water, though. Yeah. Would it, would have been interesting to see what he come back as. Yeah. Uh, Sammy and then they blocked, get back to the ring. Well, Sammy blocks the twist of fate on the lawn. That was nice. Mm-hmm. When he sort of springed out there. Um, Matt locks Sammy in the garbage. No? No, in the garage. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they, in the garage. And then, then Sammy follows Matt with a sledgehammer and then Skarsgård gets it away, saves him. Skarsgård, the boat. And then he says, lock the garage. Or lock, lock the dome. Yeah. That was it. Lock the dome. And then he got locked in. Sammy removes the ropes. Hits Matt with a steel clamp, choking him with the ropes. I thought that was wicked, man. Yeah. That looked awesome. It looked like something out of Anaconda or something, right? Or uh, Independence Day when he's like, release. <laughs> <laughs> forget. Um, yeah, yeah, hits him up with a blah, blah, blah. swans on off a ladder on the table by Sammy. What do you think of that? Yeah, it was nice. Pretty nice. Uh, Twist of Faith was Twist of Faith was fucking brutal. Yeah, brutal, nasty as fuck, man. Um, and then Sammy's head, something ears are bleeding. Is that right? Maybe I don't know. Sammy's head, mouth and ears are bleeding. 
I don't know. I think it's probably, I don't know. Chair to head, that was sick. Where he, uh, he just basically gave him a free shot of the chair. Yeah, well, there was a spear off the apron as well through a table by Matt. Just before oh, that was that. it. So, my bad, man. Yeah, that was it. Spear off a table and then he was bleeding. Yeah. They were saying he was bleeding tears in his mouth. Even though it was a cut, you didn't see him land. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, my bad. And then, yeah, then, then he gives him the free shot of the chair. He's like, ah, hit me with a chair. <laughs> and he just fucking hits it, man. I thought that was quality, mate. If he hadn't got a lump on, on his head on Wednesday... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or even, uh, or even on his blog. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fucking brutal, though, man. Uh, chair to head, sick. Chair to Sammy's head on concrete. Concerto. The concerto. Yeah. The concerto. That was the finish of the match. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. It was, good. it was a good match, except for all the stuff that was going on, or like... It's like we we didn't know then about when we when they went back into the ring and it was like any bits happening like because it was like but it was worthless. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah, there's a little bit of a rivalry building here between Private Party and uh, Proud and Powerful, but it's still it's not the match we're watching. Like, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. so but yeah, Matt um, man of the match for me. Uh, yeah, agreed, Matt man of the match for me. And uh, Matt Hardy won the match. And there was six momentous moments. And I upped you by one, and I had seven momentos. Nice, nice. Um, sick match. Lots going on. Sammy G gets thrown in the trash and taken out by Private Party. And driven oh, off look. by Senor Benjamin. Yeah. And then uh, Sammy gets put in a bin, and then on the back of the band, taken away, and Revy plays off of the piano. Mm-hmm. That's the other one of this. But yeah, it's too much. Mm-hmm. Like I said I, I, I did expect a bit more from it. I thought it was, uh, I thought there was going to be something a bit more unique, considering it was Matt Hardy, and he, he seems to do things quite unique when it comes to the. Yeah, but like I said, mate, I think it's a bit. I mean, I did like the way we didn't touch on it. Um, like Hurricane ki- got kidnapped in Impact during a match, and like Matt, when Matt was like, he's like, "Where have you been the last two years?" And he was like, "Ah, I had to get to AEW to finish the storyline." <laughs> I like that. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, that's, that's reference it. Huh? Yeah. Is that what that reference? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let's see what they make of it, man. Let's see what he's if he's on Dynamite or anything. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, like, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm just down on those matches. It was, it was nothing to do with that match. Yeah. It's just I've seen so many recently now, because obviously I watch everything. Yeah. It's just, there's nothing new to be thrown at me with it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Go ahead. Let's move on there, bro. Next promo. up, we had uh, Lance Archer and Jake the Snake Roberts promo. Jake the Snake Roberts. So you can speak about this because I missed it. Soon he'll have one of these things in his voice. Um, I gotta feed the monster hawk, basically. So next up, we had the MJF Jezza build up hype. Yeah. There wasn't much, mate. Basically, it was just Lance Archer's gonna go through you. He's gonna take out this person, take out that person, take out this person. Yeah. It wasn't anything. Else. Same old spiel. Same old spiel. So next up, we had the MJF uh, Jericho build up hype. Video package for MJF MJ versus Jericho match. Or if MJF joins the inner circle or doesn't join the inner circle, who were you rooting for and who were you not rooting for? Uh, I thought it made sense for uh, MJF to win it. I made. I thought it was the same. MJF winning the match. A lot of people were like, "No, it doesn't make any sense." And it's like, "Well, it makes perfect sense." Yeah. It does. Add too many members to a click. Some people have got to leave, changing the storylines. Exactly. You know, it's like all oh, those ants over there are working really well. Oh, get a little bit of beer and stick a circle onto some of them. It's like, why? Because it's funny as fuck. It makes them think outside the box and they got to get around that beer, like, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's just that, mate. That's yeah. all it is. Stick MJF and Wardlow in there. Wardlow team is up with Jake Hager. They fuck off then as a tag team. Dominate tag team for a while. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of stuff. That's just one. 
Yeah, exactly. There's loads of ways. It's like my missus was like, how do you, how's it going to play out? I was like, well, you know, it'll be all good for the first few weeks and then MJF's going to go, well, I beat you, Chris, so why should I listen to you? I should yeah. be in charge. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Anything like, like that. That's what never thing. That's never scenario. So, bump. And then you can have all the other scenarios going off in the background. Yeah. And I was like, Ortiz isn't down with MJF being in there, but Santana didn't mind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was uh, on the fence. So you've got all sorts. All sorts. There is loads of storyline potential there. Like, but in all fairness, AEW keeps you keeps you guessing the whole time. Yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah, the match was uh it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, MJF sparkly jacket. I think people thought it might have been Jericho to start off, but no, it was MJF. Yeah, it was a nice touch. Yeah. Uh, handshake into slap off and then punches. It was a real stiff match from the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was like a Jericho went out there to teach him a lesson. Like, yeah. Like, you might be a little rich bitch, but uh, you're talented, boy, but I'm going to make sure you earn this. MJF goes for the dive and then Fane stops. Like, nah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and then he does do a dive into into guardrail for Jericho. I don't know, whatever. No. Judas effect into post. Well, I thought it was quite nice. Never just, seen him. Well, I've seen him like do the Judas effect and it'd be reversed, but never seen him do the Judas effect on a, a unanimous object. Right? Yeah. Just before that, Jericho takes the, the camera. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of filming. Fuck Vince. Yeah. Guess, guess a cheeky yeah, fuck Vince in there. Yeah. I think that's what that was, mate. Maybe Jericho's watching. Yeah, he does, bro. Definitely. Send us a bottle of bubbly. I bought enough for your merch. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, Jericho flapjacks MJF and he shouts, oh, shit, mm-hmm. which I thought was a nice selling point of the match. Don't hear many people. <clears throat> many people reacting in certain moves. It's normally uh, an MJF independent like, move, that is. Say again. It's an independent move, that isn't it? It's normally the crowd that yeah. the the arena's empty enough for you to be able to say that. Yeah, exactly. But AEW does feel like an independent feel. Not well, independent everywhere company, it is at the moment, bro. I think it did anyway. Yeah. No, no, it's good, man. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. It felt very independent for me. Like, right when he did it, I was like, oh, just reminding me of being at a live event, like, Jeremy. You know I mean? Yeah. You know, all the nitty gritty bits, like. Yeah. Being uh, down MJF, the- fingers of uh, Jericho. But he thought it was a bit cobbage restrictive. <laughs> uh, Bulldog into corner was a bit played out, I feel. Yeah. But, um, he, like, ran him into the one corner and then ran across the ring in the Bulldog, and it was like, what? Like, oh, that's an old did, school did, did, Jericho move, though. He did that back in the early 2000s, bro. I know, but it just, I know that. But it was like, it just didn't work for me. It just didn't make sense. Like, Fair enough. I'm not, didn't make, it didn't, I didn't feel it. Like, uh, axe handle off the top to the outside was quite nice. No, axe handle off the top by Jericho. Yeah, it was, yeah. Lion salts by Jericho was quite nice. Frankensteiner by what the fuck? Jax. Jericho. I written Jax. Yeah, it was by let's Jericho. Let's say right. Let's say I wrote Jazz. <laughs> Z. They're very close. Yeah, Frankensteiner by Jericho. Nice arm suplex by MJF. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jericho jabs at MJF. Yeah, it was just, nice. Just, just, um, just, just with the left one as well. Just the left. Just the left. Yeah. <clears throat> That was quite nice. Uh, Boston Crab by Jericho. Well, before that, it was a nice single overarm head takeover by uh, MJF. He sort of done the, the hammerlock thing, which has been the theme of the night. I, that's what I... That was a nice arm suplex thing I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. it was overhead, wasn't it? That was beast, mate. That was sick. Um, yeah. Uh, and then what did you say was next? Oh, yeah, the Boston Crab. The Boston Crab, unfortunately. Yep, yeah, guess a rope break. Yeah. And then MJF Jesse. hits a, a cool breaker, then the hit heat seeker. Yeah, just before that, Jericho makes out that he's won, arms up in the air. Yeah. And then has a, and then has a pop at Aubrey. 
I will say, I lose interaction with, uh, with the beds. Jericho pulled out all the old tricks tonight. It felt like yeah. watching a young Jericho tonight. Yeah. He was so putting MJF over me. Yeah. Yeah, he, Heat Seeker. I got ropes. Yeah. Because he does the what Heat Seeker that? on the ropes. I've forgotten to elaborate. Right, so he was dangling over the ropes and then he did the code breaker while he was dangling over the ropes and then he set him up for the Heat Seeker and then he... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I don't. <laughs> uh, code breaker, Amber, on Jericho. Yeah. Wardlow gives MJF the ring. Yep. Yeah. And Hager throws... Oh, bats to MJF. I don't know why I'm writing. Yeah. Uh, he goes back, back to MJF. MJF turns around. Um, the ref is still distracted by Wardlow. As the ref turns around, MJF pulls Neddy Guerrero. He lies. He cheats. He steals. But a bum. As big as he did, he feigns the injury. Jericho was like, no, no, I didn't do anything. And then MJF hits the sneaky pin. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, now I remember. I was very, very tired, so I do apologise for my notes. Um, MJF does an Eddie Guerrero slight pin pin. Yeah. Slight pin pin is a slight pin finish. Uh, MJF man of the match for me. Um, I am a Jericho man of the match. Jeez, jeez. MJF wins. One moment, I had this. Yeah, it was a low score in one, but not as low as that. I had four yowie wowies. Oh, that's not too bad. Like I said, I was very tired, man. Very tired. It might After have just been. It might have just Welcome. been the nostalgia for Jericho because it just remind. It did very much remind me of a young Jericho you fight. Jericho. You know a young Jericho fighting Triple H back in the day, like. Yeah. No, mate. Honestly, by this match, I was just like, ah. ah. Yeah. I was like, literally, my eyes were drooping, mate. So yeah, my my one moment should have been more really. But uh, after the match. Inner Circle, welcome MJF and Wardlow into the Inner Circle. Yeah. And then we had a promo for the next pay-per-view. Yeah. Revolution, Revolution. Saturday, yeah. February 27th. Which I'm, li- I'm living the... Okay. This is another reason why I live AEW. We haven't got a pay-per-view for the rest of the year. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's not... It's not... It's not like... Right then, we've got a pay-per-view this Sunday. Then in two weeks' time, we've got another pay-per-view. Then we've got a special on Thursday. Then a pay-per-view on Saturday. And then we're going to have a two-week break because AEW are having a pay-per-view. Then we're going to have another three pay-per-views. Fuck Vince. Fuck fuck Vince, fuck Vince, fuck Vince, fuck Vince. Yeah, the system's broke, mate, over there. The system in AEW at the moment, absolutely perfect because they can make their 12 weeks because it's like a three-month break. Exactly. They can make... 12 weeks feel like there's pay-per-views in between without there being pay-per-views because of their fantastic matches all the time. Exactly. You know, that's the way it is. But yeah, at this point last night when I was watching it live, I went to bed. I wrote down promotion, revolution, which is like goes on uh, February 28th, 27th. 27th. Saturday, February uh, 27th. Then I wrote promo dash of uh, Gonzalez with Orange and Best Friends. Yep. And then they are confronted by Kip and Miro. With Super Sexy. And they call them Young Boys again. Or yeah. something. New Boys. My Boys. Gay mm. Boys. Something. Yeah. Uh, and then makes a joke and goes, I want you don't slip. From when Trent fell off the ropes. Yeah. So played out like, do you know what I mean? Uh, then I wrote matches. Now I'm going to bed. Yeah, well, so the matches I they turned it, well, the matches ran down. The matches that they ran down were the matches they'd already ran down, which I've already ran down earlier. P- P- Penta, Phoenix, the three matches that had been announced on That was it. So it was a rerun. All good. And then we moved so on step. to the main event of. The evening. Yar. Which was between John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. In an I quit match for the AEW World Heavyweight title. 
which is, Brilliant. I gotta be fair, the most beautiful belt in the game. Oh, fucking right, it is, mate. All day long. Yeah. All day long. All day. By far. It does remind me of an old WWE belt, but I can't remember which one. But it was an old one. Might have yeah. been, might have been a WCW. Yeah, it's more of a WCW world title, I think, is the most, most it looks like. Yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah, beautiful title. I love one. So, uh, my birthday's May, Christmas is around December. Yeah, um, 25th of December would be a good day to get me one of them. If not, 23rd of August. If not, the 1st of January, the 2nd of January, the 3rd of January, the 4th of January, and so on with the English calendar. Any one of those days would be great. Please. I don't need a money. I'm not talking to you. I'll oh, tell you what, I'm... if you buy me one, I'll defend it against you. How about that? You get a chance to win it back. If I buy one for you, mate, <laughs> I, it ain't going to get to you. I'm going to buy one for you and I'm going to go, you know, come, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, what's, that? what's that in the background there? I'd be like, oh, that's my mirror. No, it's not. It's a fucking belt. No, it's a fucking mirror. And then I'll turn my camera. And okay. Then Go in, bro. That's not it. In it, huh? In it. I can't see. I can't. I can't see. It. It's behind the phone. I know. I know what it is, mate. It's the the lack of AEW title. It's the original <laughs> battle. Not AEW title of the world. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I'd be buzzing if I had an AEW title. Um. Anyway, let's get to the match, man. Let's get to the main event of this, isn't it? Uh, starts off with a bit of vicious punch off. That's yeah. They just start slapping and punching each other. Nice, the sort of thing you start off as a mate in a match, just that whack, 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 whack. Yeah. You know I mean, um, King Bite in Mox is here early on, and they're giving it all. Well, it's legal, Bob. Bob, it's legal. We can rip his ear right off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're not going to rip his ear right off. <laughs> but, um. And then uh, another bit of a slap off. And then uh, Eddie Kingston gets a better. It's a belly to belly. Which is quite nice. Bit yeah. of a weird step out, belly to belly. Uh, Kenny, get, Kenny gets chair. But Mox hits the dive before he can use it. Yeah. Played, played that as well. as uh, Played that well. Where he was like, oh, I, I, well, I was distracted by the chair. I couldn't see what was happening. And... You know, Mox took, took advantage that he was concentrated on the chair, like the way they yeah. played it like that. Rather than it just be the, the same old, oh, well, I've got the chair, and I'm looking at you, I'm waiting for you to dive, and then I just threw the chair out of the way at the last second. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I like that psychology in it. Uh, chair gets chucked at the head of uh, Kingston. Yeah. Uh, that was my word. Mox says he'll break your fingers. And then spices out his fingers on the outside. Do you know all right? For a second though, I genuinely thought I was going to see a snap finger. I thought he was genuinely going to snap his finger and then just be like, Ugh! vomit all over the place. <laughs> uh, super X onto the concrete. Yeah. On the outside. I feel like I'm saying it all over here. You crack on. Yeah, I'm trying to find where you are. <laughs> I, I always switch over, man, when it's something quite memorable. I know you would have written down Super Black Side Concrete. Yeah, I know. That's um, why I'm trying to find it. Box chokes Kingston, and then bites it, to, and then uh, Kingston bites to get out. Or well, Moxley's choked by Kingston, and then he bites to get out. Yeah, that's right. Moxley bites him to get out of it. Mm. Kingston falls over when throwing Mox into the guardrail. Good match, this one. Yeah, it was. Uh, Mox gets chucked into post and then Moxley's leading 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 I'm trying to slow down a little bit so you can kind of catch up a bit but I, I just went through it from the beginning man. well no you got um, well you had uh, two nice backdrop suplexes by ID then just throws a chair at Mox like you said Eddie yeah. um, pulls off the barbed wire off the bat and wraps it around his fist and nails Mox. Eddie hits the uh, Oricon. Then yeah. Mox suplexes Eddie through two chairs, which was nice. Oh, I made that look brutal. Yeah. 
It didn't uh, didn't collapse properly. Did you see the one leg that was like sticking out, spiking? Yeah. That could have been fucking deadly. Yeah, the one chair went through not went nice. The other one just switched the, the bit. Other chair. You hit the other chair, I don't think. Yeah, that's what I mean, like. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. I was I mean, probably. Um. You can't carry on. Uh, where am I? Eddie Kingston goes for the thumbtacks. Yep. Uh, German by Mox, backdrop by Eddie, then a beastie clothesline by Mox. And then we have, for me, the moment of the match, the spinning rock bottom on the tax by Eddie Kingston. Yeah, they fuck, were cool, man. Fuck me, that was brutal. He proper slammed him on those tax. Yeah. Belly to belly. I wrote. Spinning, well, belly to belly, spinning rock bottom, whatever. Then, uh, yeah, it, yeah, actually, I wrote belly to belly. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was weird. It was a weird one. Yeah, yeah. I like, I'm cool with that. I didn't catch it as a rock bottom, but I'll, I'll take your joke on that. The best, best I way I could come up with, it, bro. I didn't think about that. Huh? It's the best way I've seen it. Spinning rock bottom, like. Mm. I was very cool. Or a modified black hole slam. Yeah. But, uh, uh, kick to the nuts by Kingston. Yeah, a few times and then just stomping on him in a submission esque move style. This was uh, just after he got the cleaning fluid from the medical box. Yeah. Which is uh, pure alcohol, basically. Used to clean cuts. Stings like bugs. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, pours, uh, pours all the cleaning fluid all over Mox's back. And Mox is kind of rigging it around and all that. He, he took the seal off, so I'm assuming it was the stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it would have made sense because he's going to have to do it after the match anyway. Yeah. And I noticed then when Eddie Kingston was choking out Mox, he had thumbtacks in his head. Yeah, right on the top of his forehead, like right in the skull line, like. A bit like, yeah, it's two of them, wasn't it? Yeah. Hmm. It's like, how the fuck they get there, man? Just rolling around in that, innit? Unless when Kingston hit him on the top of the head, some of them dug in. Yeah, or, or like... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, could, they could be in your arm, but then if you go like that, come out yeah. your arm into your head or whatever, anything like. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite mad that they stayed there for a while. Like. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Mox hits a paradigm shift and then starts screaming at Eddie, this is the only way to end it, brother. This is the only way to end it, brother. And it chokes him out with a barbed wire. Yeah. It's fucking sick. It was brutal, sick, but it wasn't as brutal. I, I, I don't... I don't mean to sound like a bloodthirsty fan, right? But I expected it to be a little bit more ECW than it was. Yeah, I did. I, like Sabu I and Terry that, Funk. I actually expected more of. I expected like a Sabu Terry Funk, which made you cringe more. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a moment in the match where it's like, well, these guys are supposed to be best mates. Like, they're just fighting like they're two guys. Mm. You know, it didn't feel as though like there was any... There should have been maybe maybe a moment where they're like, "Ah, oh, look, mate, don't just don't make me do this shit." Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just give it up, like, do you know what I mean? Maybe a conversation where one of them's got them choked out, like, do you know what I mean? Like you'd have if you were mates still. You'd be you'd be like, "Get choke and be like, oh, look, man, let's just let's just fucking stop this now and walk and be mates. Just go and have a beer." Yeah. No, oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, whatever. Do you know what I mean? There was none of that in there, though. There should have been some of that. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just felt. I felt like Eddie Kingston, like not that he didn't step up, but I felt like he needed to make this something special for yeah. his career to carry on skyrocketing in AEW. I just yeah. don't think it quite had that. No, it didn't. Moment. The promo was bigger than the match. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, don't get me wrong. Though. Don't get me wrong. The match was great and it was brutal. It just didn't have that. I don't know, how can I say, like a, a Mick Foley Cactus Jack or a, a, a Terry Funk versus Sabu feeling yeah. to it like that. I, I genuinely think that it, it lacked that I need my older brother kind of feeling to it. Mm. You know, it, it should have had that in it. The way they hyped it, the way Eddie Kingston was, you know, he, he acts as a tough man, blah, 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 blah. And it was it was good to see him, uh, the words I quit, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, there was no... There was no moments of mates during that match. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like they were, but it was like more from Moxie, but it wasn't like pleading to like stop or 
anything like that for the one to turn around and say, you know, because there was never going to be any kinks there. It would have had to be mocks. Yeah. You know, don't make me do this, man. Let's just stop. Let's think about this. Like, and then Eddie Kingston going, no, 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 no. And then hitting him in the nuts or whatever, like, or biting him or something. You yeah. Know? But, yeah. No. Too much. Not as good as what I expected it to be. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Paradigm shift. Bob Wire choke out finish. Eddie says, I quit. Yeah. Uh, Mox wins. Mox man of the match for me. Mox man of the match for me. And only the five. Uh, <laughs> I only talked about one, and I had six. Six. Um, decent match. Expected a bit more. Some great spots. After the match, Kenny Omega comes out facing off with Mox. Yeah. Which uh, I'd like to see Omega take it from him. I think he's going to make... Yeah. I think it's time. But I wouldn't be disappointed if he didn't. I wouldn't be win. disappointed if he didn't, but... I think it's time for Kenny to shine now. Not yeah. that he needs the belt, but it makes sense because I know a lot of people, they say they're getting bored of Mox, but then the moment he loses it, they'll be like, oh, fuck's sake, blah, blah, blah. Because wrestling fans are fickle like that. Me, personally, I think Mox has had a decent run now, so I wouldn't mind him losing it, but I wouldn't mind him keeping it. Because yeah. like I said, Kenny's one of those wrestlers that doesn't need the belt. Yeah. But I do think it would help AEW and Kenny if he took it now. Because I do, I agree. the first two champs are yeah. Jericho and Moxley, former WWE yeah. talents. Like, not no, no disrespect to them or WWE, but they are known, best known for WWE. Fuck Vince. Up. Fuck Vince. So now let's have a homegrown, never WWE guy. The best yeah. bout machine. Let's let him prove he's the best bout machine. Let's well, have him. Now, they? They, got, they got Darby all in. Never yeah. been a WWE. Brand new character. Out of the fucking Indies. Out of nowhere, beast. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But yeah. for the main picture, because Kenny isn't look like he's not a fresh talent. Don't get me wrong, he's a leg end. Like no, I said, he's got the experience. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. He's got the W W the W W shit fucking shit old place from the Indies, like because he's mm. travelled the world. He's done New Japan. He's done Triple H. He's done. Did he do Impact for one nap? So I don't think so. No. He did well, yeah, anyway, him. regardless, he's, he's wrestled all over the world. He has mm. got that experience and he would be a great ambassador as the first AEW world champion that's not WWE. Yeah. Not that it makes a difference though, because they are not WWE right no, now, are they? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... Not you, I'm talking to fans. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, yeah, as that perspective of those fans. Like, you mean, me, yeah. I, I see it as it is. They're personal contractors. Like, you're stupid if you don't yeah. believe otherwise. Like, you mean, it's like, people are like, oh, well... This person was made there, and it's like, well, actually, Scott Hall was in WCW before he was in WWE and became Razor Ramon. Yeah. And they all go, oh, WWE rejects. And it's like, oh, well, ROH rejects, Impact rejects, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, exactly. ICW rejects. Uh, do we need to go on? Exactly. You know, they're not rejects. At the end of the day, they're just people that get snapped up to one place from the Indies. Because you've got to come from the Indies if you're a wrestler, unless you are one of those unfortunate models that can wrestle or bodybuilders that can wrestle or bouncers that can wrestle or, or have a father that can wrestle huh? or have a father that can wrestle mm. exactly but uh yeah the the main event wasn't as as good as i thought it should have been no but nonetheless a good main event yes yeah, definitely agreed but that is the end of the paper Yep, yeah, that's the end of full gear. Second full gear that's ever happened. Yeah. And you can check out our um, you can check out our last review of last year's one in our YouTube because it'll be there. Yeah, there's a library of them all. Yeah, so check them out. We've been fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I've been Bigsy. I've been Dozy. This is the Real Wrestling Show. Dash blog. Uh, big up to everyone who shares, likes, you know, all the pages. When things get back to normal a little bit more, Big Z will roll the credits again. Yeah, in, in the middle of moving at the moment. Yeah, and, I've been, Almost done. and I'm just shit at technical stuff like that, as you can tell by the videos. Yeah, he, he doesn't take the time out in further to learn it. Motherfucker. 
you got to have you got to have the will in for it, man. So all good. But thank you anybody who watches and shares and likes. Thank you all. Yeah. And thank you anyone who allows us to uh, like join your pages as the Real Wrestling Show National. Yeah. So uh, big up so, to you all. Stay safe. Pandemics. Fuck it. Watch your hands. Fuck Vince. Fuck Wash Vince. your hands. Wear your masks. Bada boom. There we go. Peace out. Catch you next week.